Okay, hello YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about kind of an interesting idea I was having. It basically happened after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. And now right here, I was thinking about playing this move pawn to a3. And I know this move looks a little strange at first. Like, why would we play this weird looking wing pawn move? And it comes back to this other line that I like. Um, there's this line called the Gunsberg variation. Uh, it goes knight c3. It happens in the four knights. Knight f6. And then people play a3 here. And this move is actually really interesting. One of the main things that it's aimed against are sort of the two most tempting moves in the position. As you can see, the the assessment is just given here is equal. Uh, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, the whole story is this, that there's two kind of very tempting moves here. One of them is to play point to d5, and one of them is to play bishop c5. And in both cases, a3 is a pretty useful move. Uh, and as you can see, like, you know, this move a3... There's a lot of heavy hitters that have actually tried uh, this move. If I scroll down, you can see, you know, Fabiana Carana has played it with the white pieces. The Pomniche has played it with white. You know, I mean, varying degrees of success, but, I mean, it's telling that guys like Daniel Dubov are willing to try this with the white pieces. It, this is not ridiculously far outside of the realm of something that's reasonable, especially considering some of the ideas behind it. Like, if, for example, Bishop C5, you have this really cool fork trick. This is one of the neat things that you can do at the club level. And it's one of the reasons I like the Gunsberg variation. It's this knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d4 going for the four trick where they don't have bishop b4 available. Now bishop d6, you just kind of take away the whole center and then you go e5. And not only are you getting your piece back, you're gaining massive control of the center. You can see the assessment is actually up to plus, you know, like 0.6. It's over a half a pawn because you're getting that whole center of the board. And it's a really cool thing. So... That's one of the cool temptations with the Gunsberg is you're kind of provoking, you know, this bishop c5 where you have this fork trick starting with knight takes c5. And another thing you're aiming at is you're aiming at something like, say, d5. And uh, you can see uh, there's a bunch of different kind of tries here. You have a lot of games with uh, you have a lot of games with bishop b5. You have a lot of games with ed5. The, the main move that I always tried here was just e takes d5, knight takes d5, and then bishop to b5. And this should be relatively simple equality, but I've always preferred these positions with the colors reversed, and the move a3 being thrown in doesn't seem to hurt me very much in these situations. So one of the main ideas is after knight c3, b c3, you're just going to basically attack the middle of the board with pawn to d4. You're going to castle and play pawn to d4, and white's going to have the center. And of course, once you play pawn to d4, if they do exchange, like ed4, cd4, then a3 is certainly not a useless move, just having this move inserted. It's not going to hurt you in any way, just having this a3 move inserted. And if you like playing these positions with the black pieces, and there's no reason you shouldn't, I mean, th this is still objectively roundabout equal, uh, then... These are totally reasonable positions to play. So that's kind of the idea behind the Gunsberg is it's aimed against these two things. It's aimed against d5, uh, where, again, they, they can't throw in this, you know, whatever to b4. And it's also aimed against uh, it's also aimed against this bishop c5. So that led me to thinking, are there other ways that I can play the Gunsberg that are kind of different? You know, just to really throw people off. Because that's always a good way to get quick wins, is to try to throw people off. And that's where I came up with this idea of just playing pawn to a3. Now, at first I thought, maybe this isn't a smart idea. Maybe it's not as smart as I think it is. Because my first thought was, am I threatening to play knight takes e5 against bishop c5? Because again, bishop c5 is the most logical, most tempting move. Am I threatening to play knight takes e5 here? Can I just play it right now? And the answer to that is no. It's not great to play knight takes e5 here. It's not bad, it's not terrible, but it's not great. Like, at first I thought it would be great, because a3 is a useful move. It prevents the Frankenstein Dracula, if you don't know what that is. Like, knight takes e5, queen h4. Again, if they play knight takes e5, you're going to play the fork trick. This is going to be advantage white. So, like, if knight takes d5, d4, this is advantage white. So you're doing great here, if you can get this, if you can get the fork trick. But there's no obligation to do that. Uh, queen h4 would be the correct move. Knight d3 would basically be forced hitting the bishop. And now my original thought was, you know, if they retreat the bishop and I play knight c3, I have an advantage because they have no way of playing knight b4 
because my pawn protects that square. That's the main line and the reverse of this. In the Frankenstein Dracula, they play knight b4, and they go after this knight, and you get this wildly complicated position. But of course here, it would have to be advantage white, because knight b4 is not possible. But then I realized, you know, this is silly, because queen takes e4 just completely equalizes, and I am playing the white pieces. Uh, so, you know, we would just have to exchange queens, and then this position is just totally, totally equal. It's it's the same material, same pawn structure, same everything. Uh, there's just nothing to play for here with white. White's certainly no worse, but there's just nothing to play for. So then I thought, okay, so if a3, bishop c5, what's the correct move? And that's when I realized, you know, you can transpose basically into the exact same identical Gunsberg variation. Like, I don't like any other alternative, really. Like, I don't like these bishop c4 lines, because if you're going to play that, why didn't you just play bishop c4, like, on move 3? It makes more sense, because it's not clear that a3 is the most useful move that you can play after bishop c4, bishop c5. Would you play a3? I wouldn't. I would play, like, an Evans Gambit, or I would play c3, or I would even play d3, or I would castle and play rookie 1. But a3 is kind of the last move on my list. So I don't like, you know, playing bishop c4 here. But knight c3, just threatening to transpose into a Gunsberg, this is interesting. Because, again, the most tempting move in this position is just for black to develop. And guess what? We're right back in this Gunsberg variation. We just made it right back here. We're back in the Gunsberg. You know, and we're going to play knight takes e5, and we've got the same thing. Knight, take, knight takes e5, d4, bishop d6, f4. It's identical. So we're offering essentially the same trap, but we're offering it from a different move order. So maybe if you've tricked somebody with the Gunsberg one time and you want to trick them again, you can try this different move order. If they have a slightly different style of play, you can try this different move order. And it seems like just about everything sort of transposes. So they can try a different move order as well. Like if they if they play, if you play a3 and they play knight f6, knight c3 is a direct transposition back into the Gunsberg. This is the mainline Gunsberg variation again with pawn to a3. If they play uh, g6 and you play knight c3, again, like the computer gives, the best move here is knight f6. And again, this is a direct transposition into the Gunsberg variation where you've played knight c3, knight f6, a3, and they've countered with g6. So at this point, I mean, you can follow, still, you're following a lot of heavy theory games. You know, you're following Gusuma versus Kuriana. You're following all of these big heavy guys. But what what's interesting is that you can get to this from this different move order. You can get to this from this move order beginning with pawn to a3. And seemingly there's no downside to it because... The only moves that seem logical here are like g6, knight f6, and bishop c5. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot else that you need to be particularly concerned about in terms of the theory. There doesn't seem to be anything on the database that people have tried, uh, other than, I guess, this one game where somebody tried uh, f5, which seems almost like, <laughs> like just advantage white after d4. So, uh, you know, this one game where somebody tried f5 d4 and this looks like basically just advantage white like you know f takes e5 knight takes e5 and white's doing pretty good again the inclusion of a3 actually kind of helps you um if you're going to play against uh whatever this is i guess it would be a latvian um so kind of a version of the latvian but uh, in in any case this is just slight edge white so i think this idea which as far as i know doesn't have a name uh, that I could find. I think this is something worth trying. I think we we can give this a shot. And it's basically just with the idea of transposing back into a Gunsberg variation uh, from a slightly different move order. Uh, so anyways, um, I hope you found this content interesting. I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. And uh, thank you very much for watching.